Good morning, church. We're so glad you're out here with us in the garden. If you guys want to stand, if you guys want to sit, if you guys want to get on the app and look for some lyrics, it should be on the app and the website this morning. If you're watching online, hey, welcome. Thanks for tuning in on the Facebook. Let's sing out to our God this morning. Yes, I will. Count on one thing. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. And yes, I will. If you are in the lowest valley, yes, I will. Bless your name. We're so glad you're here. If you're just getting in here, we're so glad you're out here this morning that you found us. If you're tuning in online again, welcome. If you guys are new and you're just with us for your first time today, hey, welcome. Doing things a little different this morning. We have our hospitality and connections table out here at the picnic tables. Check that out. Grab some coffee. In the meantime, if you still have your kids and you don't want to have your kids, we have the front door open this morning uh, to temporarily not have your kids. The children's ministry is still right inside. Bathrooms are right inside. And just be mindful of that this morning if you're just connecting with us now. Guys, we're going to, excuse me, I'm going to clear my throat. We're going to continue to sing this morning. And uh, let's sing out to our God who guards our heart, who guards our lives. He wants us to see breakthrough in that life. Let's sing to him. Sing, I am weary. Thank you. 
God, we thank you for providing a way. God, we thank you for opportunities to be portable, to be flexible as a church. God, to sit out here in your creation and worship you. God, we ask this morning, would you continue to move, continue to heal and to mend broken hearts, to bring lost and wandering hearts and souls back to you today. We ask for that breakthrough that we sing about. Father, would you bring breakthrough? Would you break walls down in our hearts, keeping you out? Speak through your mind, give them the words to, to speak that, God, we might, we might hear a word from you this morning. To have the hearts and ears, God, to listen, to be obedient to you. Thank you so much for this opportunity, God. We lift all these things up to you. In your son, Jesus, mighty name. And all the people said, Amen. Church, you may be seated.
Well, church in the beer garden. Who would have thought? <laughs> BYOB, I guess. Five of us. Five of us, yes. Hey guys, uh, my name is Mike. I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad that you're joining us for Connection Christian Church. Uh, last Sunday, when we were on our way out, I found out that the pool tables were still going to be up this Sunday. And I said, oh, what are we going to do? How are we going to manage this? And so we kind of kicked around some different ideas, and that's how we ended up here in the beer garden. It's like we measure out the patio. It's like, gosh, I think maybe we can do it. You know, so let's give it a go. So here you are, giving it a go, and it looks like something we could do in the future too. And God has blessed us with just a great morning to be able to do this as well. Hey, lots of uh, great traditions in our families. Uh, what are some of the traditions that you really uh, appreciate about your family or that maybe you've established within uh, your your immediate family as well? Any, any traditions out there that you guys really love? I have to shout it out. <coughs> Nobody? A bunch of guys. Get together as a family having a meal. Especially on the holidays, right? Thanksgiving, having everybody around. It's a great time. Movie night. <coughs> Movie night. Right? Anybody have any special meals that they do at just random times? Like maybe it's like, you know, once a week we get together and we do this thing as a family. Or Friday once a night month. pizza. Friday night pizza. Yes. Okay. How about Saturday morning breakfast? Yep. Is that a thing? <laughs> you guys try to. Bacon and pancakes. <laughs> Yeah, lots of, lots of things that are out there. Now, before we get too far into this, I'm not a traditionalist. I'm, I'm far from it. If anything looks like a pattern of behavior, I break it. And uh, that's been fun, you know, being a part of established churches in the past and trying to learn some of the cultures and traditions that are part of the churches and trying to figure out how do we break the mold? How do we reach new people without <coughs> doing things the same way? And how do we, we kind of keep people coming that are kind of accustomed? And even seven years into ministry in Connection Christian Church, there's a lot of traditions that kind of get built in. And we go, well, we've always done it that way. And I hate hearing those words. Well, we've always done it that way. Like, that means nothing to me. What matters to me is, like, are we accomplishing the mission? So what is the mission? Because the mission has to take primal space in everything that we do. The method the method can change immensely. I've shared with our team and specifically with Josh a little bit. Like I am completely anticipating now being eight years older than when I started the church that at some point I'm not going to like the music very much. And I'm going to be okay with that as long as we're reaching young people for Christ. Because the mission is way more valuable than the method. Uh, whenever we came in, uh, for gosh, five years we sat on folding chairs. This is the comfiest chairs we've ever had because the Eagles had them, right? But we just had metal folding chairs. And guess what? If one of them got broken, you throw it out and get another one. If somebody spilled something, you just wipe it up and move on. I want to be able to just say, hey, let, let's look at the walls. Oh, somebody splattered something on the wall. Just throw some paint on it. We're done. Because it's more about the mission than it is what the facility looks like. It's not about carpet. It's not about linoleum, it's not about concrete, it's not about grass. And we've said for a long time, like, gosh, we are a church without walls. And I really mean that because the church is the body of believers that's gathered together on mission. And so some of you guys, you're, you're just early on in that mission, and that's exciting. It's exciting to see what God is going to do. Some of you have been going for a while, and it's just really about continuing to keep on with the mission, keeping the mission front and center. And so many times we get... Uh, consumer minded a consumer mentality is just that we come in and we expect things to be handed to us and, and people to help us out and as much as we want that for many of our first time guests we want to roll out the welcome mat so that they can greet Jesus as easy as possible we don't want a culture where everybody is coming and expecting to be uh, force fed we want a, a group of people that can help feed one another encourage one another and that's what we've been talking about with our small groups with our D groups it's like, how can we be there to, to walk along this road <coughs> together? Uh, one of the, the musicals I remember watching uh, when I was in junior high school, actually it was early or late elementary school, uh, was Fiddler on the Roof. How many of you have seen Fiddler on the Roof? Right, I'm not a musical guy, just so you know that. Like, if it's got music in it and they're, they're like 
randomly busting out into song and dance. I think that's just the weirdest thing ever. And I know that some of you guys love it. You don't do that at home? <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's my wife goes. You do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. So there is a little bit of that. But one of the things that stuck out, stood out to me from that movie from so long ago was this song about tradition. Tradition and the Jewish faith has so many built-in traditions into the course of things. And today we're going to be in Mark chapter seven. Uh, so if you have one of those Bibles that we provide. I encourage you to turn there, and if you've got your own, you're, you're kind of on your own to find it, but Mark chapter 7 is on page 842 in the Black Bibles uh, that we provide. And we've been going through a series called Superhuman, and so we, we've been looking at the traits of Jesus, how he is both super, he's supernatural, and he's human. He's God in the flesh, incarnate. Uh, but we've also been seeing the early ministry kind of play out. And so the first week we talked about power. How his power came from the Holy Spirit because he was willing to submit to God's word. He was willing to dive in in prayer. And you and I have access to the Holy Spirit of God by submitting to God in all that we do. And one of the places we do that, the same as Jesus, is in the waters of baptism. And we let his Holy Spirit just pour out over us. And that it empowers us from the inside out. We talked about his impact. Right? His impact was multiplied because he invested in other people. People that others didn't really want to invest in. Right? Because we're talking about fishermen and tax collectors. Right? But he understood in order to reach the world, we need to make disciples, students of the word, who are going to make disciples, who are going to make disciples. And you and I are carrying that on today. You're here today because somebody has been bringing you into the discipleship process. Sometimes organically and sometimes quite strategically. But you're still brought into the process of learning more about God's word and more about Christ and what he can do in your life. And then we, in turn, take it to other people. It's, it's never like we're the end of the road. It's always the mission moving forward. And we get to be a part of it. And last week we talked about the focus that Jesus had because there were always naysayers in his life. Right? It didn't matter if it was... You know, when he was reaching this guy named Matthew who was a tax collector and he was sitting down with all of his tax collector and sinner friends and, and introducing them to Jesus, Jesus still got, he just got raked over the coals. Uh, when he was out healing people, it wasn't just enough that he was making people better. The Pharisees thought he could only do that certain days of the week. He could only eat at certain times and not eat at other times. And you and I, like, we face all sorts of oppositions in our life, too. Especially if we're new into Christ. I think we face a lot of oppositions. Many times we try to tell people, like, it's so great that you want to get baptized and identify as a believer in Jesus. And you want to follow after him. But get ready for the hard times. Because before you gave your life to Christ, you weren't such a prize. But when you put that target on your back, Satan wants to come after you full force. And it's hard work. And we have to make sure that we're connected with the body of believers to build one another up to Encourage each other, and we even alluded to that Hebrews passage. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us continue to do so to encourage each other and spur one another on. We've got to be able to do that. We even saw that some of Jesus' criticism came from his own family. We thought he was crazy. And then he turned it, the, the script over a little bit. He's talking to the disciples, the believers gathered around. He said, You know what? Who are my mother and my brothers? Right, they're right here. Those who are going to be obedient to, to me. Those, those are my mother and my brothers. Guys, this is a family thing. And today we wrap up taking a look at the heart of the matter. And that's what Jesus was, was constantly about. He was about the kingdom of God and always driving at the heart of the matter. I've had a few drainage issues this week, so bear with me. <coughs> Let's go to Mark, or Mark chapter 7. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of the disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees were the religious leaders at the time. They were one of the groups of religious leaders. The scribes were the people that kind of wrote for them, but they were kind of their officials, and so they were also among the religious elite uh, that we're talking about. 
And they too bring up an accusation against Jesus and his followers. And the thing is that they're not washing their hands before they eat. How many of you have this tradition? No, who doesn't? <laughs> but we wash our hands before we eat, right? We're done using the restroom, we wash our hands. We go outside and play, we come back in, we wash our hands. This is something that we do. But I've been around enough guys, for sure, that know that if we're out on the work site doing something, somebody brings in some sand. And uh, what they're concerned with here is not so much the actual like cleanliness of washing your hands. Let's continue reading. It says, For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they washed their hands properly, holding to the traditions of the elders. And when they can't come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? So what they're talking about here, I'll show you a little bit, is that they had some ceremony uh, involved, some tradition in their eating process. And so when you would come in as a Jew, you would dip your hands into the water, you'd kind of take your knuckles and rub up to your elbows, kind of let it drip off of you a little bit. What you're trying to do is wash the world off. You, you've been hanging around the, the heathens, the Gentiles. And so you gotta make sure that you're clean because they are so unclean. And so when they were at the marketplace, with all of the people and they're coming in, they had to make sure that they, they cleaned up before they were ready to go uh, to meet with anybody. And it was just the unclean side of things was more of being judgmental. It was more about persecuting other people. <coughs> and so when, when Jesus came in with his disciples and, and he, they weren't washing their hands, it's like, gosh, guys, not only do you eat with the sinners, you don't even wash them off before you sit down at the dinner table. I don't know what your thoughts are about that. Like, I kind of feel like there are so many people, and we can be a part of it, that there may be a people group that we go and hang out with, and we're willing to you know, sacrifice and go and hang out with a certain group of people. But when we come back, we make sure we wash off the filth. Right? Because, because we're elite. Because we're, we're Christ followers, we're better than other people. I don't know if you've ever caught yourself even when the, the door swings open at church in a bar of all places and somebody walks in from your workplace and you're like, gosh, I can't believe they're here. I, I can't believe so-and-so wa walked in here. Do you know how they've treated their family? Do you know what's been going on in their life? And I'm like, thank God they're here. Yeah. Right? Praise God that they're here. And we've got to be so careful that we don't allow the traditions of man to replace the word of God. And this is exactly what Jesus is talking about. You know, all of the commands are summed up in this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right? That we need to love other people. Love does no wrong, but it's just constantly being poured out on other people. And I hope that when people walk into Connection Christian Church or any church that identifies with Christ for that matter, that they would see the love of Christ above anything else. That they would see his grace wash over them. That they would know that this is a place where they can belong. I cannot tell you the number of people that have come in for the first time. We've had them over to our house to eat. Or we've sent them a message. And they've just said, you know, hey, we really enjoyed it. And we'd like to come back if we can. And I'm like, if you can who has brainwashed you to think that you can't be a part of the body of Christ? Guys, if somebody has ever treated you that way, I'm sorry. That should not be the way that we act to other people. We continue to love them, and we continue to call to the truth. Guys, something you're never going to see in connection is we are not going to water down the truth of God's word. But we're also not going to not love Right? We are going to love in truth. We are always going to preach it. We're going to encourage it. But guess what? It comes down to you deciding whether or not you're, not, you're going to submit to the word of God and to the will of God. Nobody can make you do that but you. We're just going to love on you. 
And I hope that you can be in the same boat. That when you see somebody walk in, you're like, gosh, I cannot believe that that person I was just hanging with at the bar last night was here. Well, first of all, you know, hypocrite. Uh, second, of, second of all, just love, right? Just love, just encourage, just grow. And guess what? When people come in and they're hurting and they're broken, chances are they're going to hurt you. Right? And we have to lean into the, the strength of God to be able to love on people who are going to hurt us. It's a really, really important thing for us to do. And so we get past this, this water and this washing that they're, they're doing on, but they continue to talk about the traditions. Right? It's the washing of the other vessels. Again, we're talking about a ceremonial washing here, not just doing the, the evening dishes. And this is how Jesus responds to their criticism. And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written? Isaiah was somebody that they had in common, right? He was a prophet. They could go back and look at his, his scroll, his manuscript, and go, Yeah, we've been studying Isaiah the prophet. Well, what did Isaiah say to the religious leaders of his time? Because they apply to the religious leaders today. And this is what he says This people honors me with their lips but their heart is far from me. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. It's kind of like putting lipstick on a pig. Have you heard that phrase before? Right? And this is something that we've got to be careful of. Hypocrites are play actors. Right? All of the people that we, we acknowledge in Hollywood that are, are great actors or actresses. Right? They're putting on a show. That's what they do. But the inside of who they are is not what's being portrayed on the outside. And so you can put lipstick on the pig and still pig. Right? You and I, we can put church clothes on the outside and still be a heathen on the inside. And so many times that's what we do. And so many times, like when we first step up to church, and we're thinking, man, I've got to clean everything off before I can walk into the doors. I've got to get right with God, and then I can come in. And we're saying, no, you don't have to do that, but then we kind of feel it, right? We feel it, and we go, maybe I just kind of need to, to look the part. I know that my life is a, a train wreck, right? I know I'm a hot mess. But if I can just dress the part and walk in, then everybody's going to be okay, and they're not going to know. And I tell people this all the time, especially as I go over to SOS on Mondays and sit down with people going through the 30-day inpatient treatment program, and every once in a while somebody will, will drop a bomb or share a story, and they're like, oh, so sorry. And I'm like, dude, just be real. All I need for you to do is be real. Don't ask that of anybody else. Like, there's a reason we say just come as you are, right? Just be real. We can love who you are, but one of the things that we don't like is loving on a phony and then figuring out later on that there's something completely different, right? So we just gotta be real about the way things are going on. So here it is again. This people, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commands of men. If you've been in many churches, you realize that some of these traditions that come along, those traditions can be as simple as Sunday school. Right? It's a method. It's not a mission. We've never had Sunday school here. We, we have a kids' ministry that goes on while you're, you're meeting. And guess what? Maybe someday that doesn't scratch an itch either. And we do something completely different because it's always mission over method. Right? It's always to love on people, to teach them, to disciple them over that. It's not about a style of music, the kind of chairs that we sit in, the, the type of organ or piano or guitar or drums that we have in service or non-instrumental, if you wish. Right? It's not about that. It's about our heart being right with God. A couple years ago, we shared a so uh, series going through what's known as the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapters 5 through 7. And in it, Jesus is constantly raising the bar. And so he's going back to some of the Old Testament things that they know, right, the law. But he's saying it's not about the surface level. It's all about the heart. It's not about whether you, you commit adultery. It's about whether you lust. It's not about whether you murder somebody. It's whether you hate. And so he's just going through these, and he's just constantly lifting up that bar. And he says, hey, we need to just love on people. We need to love God. We need to get the heart right. And so Jesus, if you can imagine, not, not uh, you know, loved on by the Pharisees, 
after he calls them out, the hypocrites. I like elsewhere where he says brood of vipers. That sounds way cooler. <laughs> brood of vipers. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of man. Guys, may we always be in the word of God so that we can hold to the commandment of God. And I know that regardless of which tradition, we're a melting pot here, which is really awesome, right? To see some people come in and like, you've got no church background. Some of you come in, you're like recovering Catholics, or at least that's what you call yourselves. Some of you come in, you've got a Lutheran background or a Pentecostal background. You know, it's just all over the board. And, I, and I've seen that and it's exciting to see. But all of those backgrounds, including our own, it's really easy to get to the tradition. And if you've ever been through our pizza with the pastor's uh, first attender class, we talk about how you know, we come from a restoration movement, which is all about going back to the early church and seeing what they did and trying to get away from everything else. Because it's, it's just like this gunk that just kind of keeps building up. You don't notice it until one day it's like, oh gosh, this is filthy. And then you have to, to scrub it and then you realize how bad it was. And so we have to just constantly refine and re restore the church back to what God wanted because our opinions they slide in the opinions of other people they slide in and we've got to say well what's God's word say about that and he said to them you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of, men, of God in order to establish your tradition for Moses said honor your father and your mother and whoever rivals father and mother must surely die these commands are both coming from Exodus Right? Again, they're very familiar with the first five books, the law, the Torah. Right? And so Moses said, love your parents. Moses said, don't mistreat your parents. Well, what are they doing? He says, but you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corbin, that is holy to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. It's kind of like saying if you were to, to get a, a new toy, we were just, some of us talking about smokers this morning. I know we got a lot of guys that love smoked meats, right? So you get this new smoker in. Ugh, dude, it's top of the line, top notch. And your parents roll in and they're like, hey, can I use that smoker? No, no, it's not mine. I gave it to God. It's Corbin. It's, it's set apart for him. Now, the thing about Corbin setting it apart for God is that I could still use it, right? But nobody else can because it's God's. And so because it's God's, like, I'm sorry, this is reserved. <laughs> you can't touch it, right? And this is not love. This is not caring. This is not respectful. This is actually lying and manipulation, right? If you're giving it with a pure heart, that's one thing. But if you're giving it just so that you can put up a, a boundary on it and say, nah, you can't use it, that's something completely different. We'll see the early church in the book of Acts, they did something completely different. Everyone sold their possessions and gave to one another as they had need. Dude, that's radical. <laughs> that's radical, just to, to this extreme generosity. Hey, it's not my grill, it's your grill. It's not my truck, it's your truck. Like We just share it together. If there's a way I can help you, if you can help me, let's just do it together. Um, that's the kind of love I hope that we see at Connection. It just says, hey, well, hey, what's mine is yours, yours is mine, let's let's do this. I'm not just gonna roll in, take it out of your backyard. I'm gonna ask first, because that's respectful. But, hey, you have this thing I can borrow? I, I know that a number of people have done that for me, I've done that with a number of people. I don't feel bad about it, right? I don't feel like I'm a, a manipulator in that because what I have is yours too. I like, just ask, it's there. And so this is what they were doing. It's Corbin, it's holy to God. And he called the people to him again. And he said to them, hear me, all of you, understand. So before it's the religious leaders, now it's the crowd. Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. So many times in their the religious rituals, there was this idea of, of there's clean food and there's unclean food, what is common. And so they would eat the clean food, but not eat the unclean food. There was the food that was 
that was available because it had not been tainted by a sacrifice to idols, and then there was food that had been sacrificed to idols. And Jesus is stepping in and saying, it's not about the stuff coming in. It's really not about the clean and, and the unclean, the common and the uncommon, right? Who cares about the false gods? They don't exist anyway, right? I gave you the food. If you want to eat it, eat it. And we see that again in, in 1 Corinthians. But then on top of that, it's, it's like what's coming out of a man is what makes him unclean. Guys, we have to understand this. When we talk about you know, church clothes and coming as you are, we understand that the unclean things are inside of us. Right? It's, it's a tainted heart. It's a broken heart. And all of the other things are flowing out of that. And we can dress up the outside, and sometimes, quite frankly, we should. right? But hopefully it's just so that we can work on the inside. We can have the motivation on the inside to do what should come naturally on the outside. <clears throat> and when he entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. So he went from the, the religious leaders to the crowd to now his, his intimate disciples. And he asked them, or he said to them, then are you also without understanding? It's kind of like saying, are you so thick headed you don't get it either? The religious leaders they didn't get it. I had to explain it to the crowd. You guys have been with me for a while. Like, anybody home? You don't get this, guys? And he lays it out. Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Right? The food that you're putting in, you're just going to deposit that later. Right? That doesn't matter. It doesn't go into your heart. And thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, Envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things are evil things and they come from within. And those are the things that defile a person. Guys, and the, the easy thing for us to, to do would be to be judgmental. Somebody on the outside doesn't have things together. We all don't have some things together. But the issue is not the behavior on the outside. It's the heart on the inside. And so instead of judging someone's behavior on the outside, how about we take the time to share Christ's love on the inside? We walk along this broken road with them. We encourage them. We love on them. Right? We show them the truth. Because if, if they understand and they embrace the love of Christ, and all of us should be in this place where, where we're a soft heart. We talked about it with the parable of the soils. We receive the word. The spirit of, of God, the word of God is planted within us and it begins to grow so we water it with a nourishment that comes from God's word. And we look at God's word and goes, oh, like sexual immorality, that comes from within. Like there's something missing inside of me. Right? There's a, there's, there's a mark that I'm not hitting. And, and yeah, I can do on the outside. I can go, you know what? I'm, not, I'm just not going to do anything sexually immoral. That means like anything is a very general statement. It, it could apply to porn. It could apply to extramarital, premarital. Uh, sexual relationships, it could be lusting with your eyes, right? So, so all of these things, I'm just going to cut that out. But the thing is that it's growing on the inside. That lust on the inside is the thing. Where are you going to be content? And I think that that's a huge thing that Christians many times can miss. When Paul says, uh, you know, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, how many of you know that verse? It's plastered everywhere. It's like John 3.16, right? Right? But he's also talking about how, you know, whether I'm well-fed or I'm not. Like if I'm wanting, it's all about God. Because I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Guys, so when, when we go through the Ten Commandments, well, we, we list the top four, right? Don't have any other gods before me. Don't make any graven images. You know, the first four are all about this love for God. The next six or about our love for one another. And only one, the tenth, really kind of gets to the heart of the matter because it talks about the coveting thing. 
right? We want what other people do not have. And sometimes that, that thing is stuff. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's a job. Sometimes it's family. Sometimes it's peace. But we're striving for things that other people don't have. And it's, it's the heart of the matter once we're really on the inside. And I know that all of us are on this journey. We're all in different places. And, and just looking through that list, and I would encourage you to do this. Look through that list and go, man, which ones, which ones are, am I struggling with? Which ones are a big deal for me? Am I really giving that part of my heart over to God as well? Or is there a part of my heart that I'm just holding on into in my pride, maybe in my arrogance? And I'm just saying, you know what? Hey, this part's off limits, God. I love you, heart, soul, mind, and strength, but just not all of it. Not yet. This part's mine. Right? The way that we slander other people. The way that we lust after their possessions. Right? All of those things come from the inside out. And those are the things that make us unclean. Okay, so I don't know what it is you battle with. Think about this for a moment. And I'm going to give you just a, a minute. Just in, in quietness and in, in still reflection. Where is my heart not fully committed to Christ? What are some of the, the unclean things on the outside that I need to start addressing on the inside? What comes out of a person is what the file said. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. I'm guessing that across the board, we struggle with at least one of these. And if we're really going to be honest, probably many of them. And maybe instead of worrying about giving the smoker Corbin to God, we worry about giving him our heart. Jesus was superhuman because he was all heart. He was all love. He loved God and he loved God's people. And regardless of what the outside looked like, he was way more concerned about the inside, the heart of the matter. And guys, if we want to care about what God cares about, then we care about the heart of the people that he cares about. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for just bringing to light the stuff that, that we just talked about. For helping us understand that, that on the outside we try to dress things up, or on the outside we feel so wholly inadequate. Maybe we try to push people away. Maybe we're super judgmental about things. But what we really need to do is we need to, need to surrender our heart to you. So, Father, this morning, if there's anybody here that for the very first time says, you know what, my heart, my heart has been broken. My heart is hard. My, my heart is, is pouring out all sorts of evil into my life, and I don't want that anymore. I want Jesus to come in and cleanse my heart cleanse the core of my being and just, just appreciate him for loving me the way that I am and, and encouraging me to be an even better version of who I am. Father, if there's anybody that, that is there, would you just meet them right where they are today? If there's anybody today that's come in with this brokenness, with this self-righteousness, with this pharisaical or hypocritical mindset, Father, would you humble us and help us to realize that our people, your people, are way more important than any traditions or any self-righteousness that comes from the, the inside out in our life. And Father, help us just to continue to strive after your will, your word, and your way. Help us as humans to tap into the supernatural power that is the Holy Spirit to live in us, to do all the things that we couldn't think that were even possible, but to die to our old self, and to be raised in newness with Christ. Father, we thank you for that kind of peace, for that kind of power, for that kind of transformation. And we give it all to you.
in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, church. <laughs> Uh, we're about to go into a time of communion, and uh, Mike talked a lot about traditions, and uh, we're going to break out an old tradition today because for the first time since March of 2020, we are going to be passing the plate. So if you believe in Jesus this morning and he is your Lord and Savior, you are welcome to partake um, in, uh, in taking the body and blood of our Lord. Now... Mike talked about tradition, and, and I am one of those people who is a uh, recovering Catholic, and I know there's a few of us here today. And I went to Catholic school, so that meant I was in church daily. That meant that I've probably taken communion well over a thousand times in my life. And it's easy to uh, let that become a tradition, something that we just do. And forget about how we are we are proclaiming the gospel when we take it, the death, burial, and resurrection. That when we come to the table and examine ourselves, and, and we look inward and we realize like how, how bad we really are, but how good God really is. So as you take communion this morning, I hope you go into that with that mindset of how good Jesus is for forgiving us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning, and we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you for new life. We thank you for saving us. For this beautiful morning where we can gather and worship you this morning. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So here in a second, we're going to be bringing back another tradition that we haven't done since March of 2020, and that's uh, we're going to be passing around the offering plates. Um, so you can, if you want to support the mission of Connection, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and have uh, the team go ahead and uh, pass those out now. And uh, while we're doing that, I kind of want to turn your attention to a few things going on, uh, both today and in the coming weeks. So at noon today, or is that at 1.00? Uh, there is a, uh, a life chain. They're going to be meeting over at the bank across the street from Pizza Ranch. I believe that's First Nebraska Bank, and they're going to be handing out signs. So you're more than welcome to line the streets uh, for the life chain today. Um, next week, there's going to be a women's ministry event where they're going to be doing uh, Bible journaling, and that's on Saturday. Uh, you can find more information about that at the uh, Connections booth. Uh, talk to Kayla about that. And in two weeks from Saturday, so like 13 days from today, 
Uh, we're going to be meeting at the Helgos Pumpkin Patch outside of Grand Island. And that's going to be $10. Uh, no uh, pumpkin this year, but there will be a... I know, man, all right? But there will be a, uh, a supper at 5 o'clock. So go ahead and meet us for that. Again, that's 10 bucks per person at the door. And then the following Sunday, the day after that, we're going to have pizza with the pastors again. So if you're new here and you didn't make it last week, um, sign up for that. And uh, we can uh, teach you all about uh, the history of Connection and, and what it is we're doing here. So I'm going to pray us out. And the band's going to lead us in one more song. And God, we thank you again for this morning and for gathering and for uh, flexibility that we're able to do this out here on such a beautiful day. Uh, be with us as we go through the events of the following weeks and uh, keep us safe as we go through our day. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Church, if I just stand back up, we're going to sing a closing song together. I think Mike already said it. Whether you put anything in our offering buckets or not, maybe the thing that you need to really give God this morning is your heart. You need to be all in for Jesus this morning before you leave this place today. And if that's something you need to do, would you talk to one of our leaders this morning? Let's have that conversation. With that. What does that look like to give our heart, to give our lives to Jesus? We're going to sing this song together this morning on the way out. It's called Holy Ground, and it has that message exactly to it. Let every burning heart be holy ground. Let our heart be Corbin. Let our heart be set apart for Jesus and his word and his mission. Make that a prayer of yours this morning. Let's sing this together. Here's your way. Here as we wait, seek your face. Come and make your throne upon our praise. Here in this place, have your way. The moment that we see you, we are changed. Show us your glory, show us your glory, wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your glory, show us your glory, let burden our be holy ground. Be holy ground. By the cross we come alive
Go grab your kids, you can't keep them here. We'll see you guys with the back of the ballroom next week on another great Sunday. Go be the church that you got your heart. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. When the rain surrender, we fall down. Show us your glory. Show us You guys got a few minutes while we're hanging around. We'd love some help with the chairs. And just go back to the past president's room right inside the door here. Appreciate you guys and all your service.